Okay, we will now go on to the navigation message, which basically consists of five subframes and actually starts with a telemetry word and a handover word. So basically, the satellite is identifying itself that I am satellite number, whatever, and uh, giving you handover word to change over from the course acquisition or CA code to the precision code or the P code. Only for military uses, but this handover word is very important. If there is no handover word, you can't change over. Right? So that is required for US military purposes. We don't have access to that. We have access only to the CA code. The first subframe basically gives you satellite clock error. Now, as I said, there is an atomic clock in the satellite, yes, but there is also an atomic clock in the master station. Right? The, the monitoring stations and then there's a master station and upload station. So there also there is an atomic clock. Now between the two atomic clocks, one on the satellite, one on the master station, which clock should be superior? Master, master station or satellite? Why satellite? There are 24 satellites, so each satellite will have its own clock, isn't it? They should be, but if there is an error, then what happens? Say, like 30 students in this class, each one of you have a watch. I also have a watch, isn't it? Is it possible that your watch time and my watch time is not the same? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Possible. So, between your watches and my watch, which one will be considered to be the master? my watch. Right? So, same way, 24 satellites have got 24 atomic clocks. Agreed. Ideally, they should be synchronized. But if they are not, then there is a master station who also has an atomic clock. So, who will be the reference point? The master station, not the satellites. Right? So, the first subframe gives you satellite clock error. That means error between the satellite clock and the master clock, right? Got that? The reference system is the master and not the, the satellites. So first subframe gives you that error. The second and third subframe basically give you the position of the satellite, the movement of the satellite, how it is moving, what time it got the upload, how much time has elapsed since the upload, etc. Because all this will basically govern the accuracy of the satellite and hence your actual position of satellite and hence your position. That is second and third subframe does that. The fourth subframe could have some specific instructions for the satellite. Let's call it operational instructions, whatever is there. So that's the fourth subframe is for that. And in the fifth subframe, it gives you information of other satellites. That means where the other satellites are so that your receiver knowing its position would find out which are the other nearby and good satellites from which it can take reference for a fix. When I say knowing position, it's not an accurate position. You could call it, I'm saying call it, it is not, but you could call it DR, approximate position. And then these are the good satellites which I can take for observation. All that calculation is done in your GPS receiver. So is this part okay now? Yes, navigation message? Yes, sir. Now having got the navigation message, the next thing is position fixing. That's what we are looking at. Ultimately, what we need is <coughs> position. Now, in the satellite, the satellite basically when it is orbiting at any particular position in space will have three coordinates. Can I call it x1, y1 and z1 in terms of latitude, longitude and altitude. Right? So any satellite will have these three. Right? And let us say these are known because satellite is giving us this information, so this is known. Let's say an observer on the surface of the earth is here. This position right now we will say x, y and z which is not known. Right? This position is not known to us but if I want to calculate the distance between these two. The formula is very simple. 
x1 minus x squared y1 minus y squared z1 minus z squared this would give us the distance between two points isn't it yes simple mathematics or yes or no yes sir okay now as we said we are also observing the satellite the satellite is transmitting a ca code which we are receiving let us say the satellite transmits the code at time t we receive the code at time t1 so what is the travel time t1 minus t so if i say it is t1 minus t as the travel time multiply by the velocity c here is the velocity of electromagnetic wave what is that velocity 3 into 10 to the power 8 what meters per second right so i can use that here is the distance in meters if i want distance in kilometers i can use this also in kilometers right 3 into 10 to the power 5 kilometers per second as the velocity and i will get distance in kilometers both the units are to be same can i say these two distances are equal yes or no yes, no why no because over here to measure the time t i am using something known as atomic clock yes Yes, but does our receiver have an atomic clock no. does it have no. no receiver doesn't have atomic clock so this time could be in error right so if this time is an error then i will say minus delta t which is the error in time multiply by c c remains the same velocity okay now this is accurate and this two are equal right because if i am not going to use atomic clock in the receiver then obviously my time is not as accurate as the atomic clock time plus my receiver time and the satellite time is not necessarily the same when master control and satellite is not the same error can be a few microseconds or whatever here also it can be there and here the method of observation itself is different one atomic clock one doesn't have atomic clock if we use atomic clock in the receivers the cost of the receiver will go very high atomic clocks are expensive in each receiver and today you know you get dgps signals even on your mobile phones in your cars the routing which is done on google maps yeah. they all refer to dgps and you can't have atomic clocks everywhere on mobile phone you don't have atomic clocks accuracy will not be as high right how many unknowns in this equation now x is unknown y is unknown z is unknown and delta t is unknown error right how many unknowns four unknowns if i need to solve this equation how many equations i need four four equations so what i need basically is observation from four satellites, four satellites. right if i and take observation from four satellites i will know all the four unknowns delta t x y and z and x y z will be my position in terms of latitude longitude and altitude right now when it comes to ships we have something known as mean sea level isn't it and how high is my antenna gps antenna from the sea level can i calculate that yes sir known to us on the ships yes sir so do we need altitude yes sir if i don't need altitude then how many unknowns Three unknowns. So to have a position on a ship, actually, I will need only observation from 
Three satellites, not four. Altitude is known. I can fit Z1 depending on the uh, Z depending on the altitude. Z1 is known, so this factor becomes known. Right? You don't rub it off and say I don't want it. Okay, then the equation is not correct. It will be there, but you will you you feed in your antenna into the GPS receiver. So what you are feeding in is Z. So Z1 minus Z is a known factor. There are only three unknowns now in three equations required for a fix. So is it clear how a fix is obtained? Yes. We only use distances. We do not use bearings. We don't take bearing of satellites, right? We only use distances from satellites, who are also aware of the term called as pseudo range. Pseudo means false. And why we say pseudo range? I'm calling it pseudo range one because let's say satellite number one, right? So this term here is referred to as pseudo range because time is inaccurate. So pseudo range from satellite one minus delta t into c, which is the error due to the user's clock. And this now will be equal to this equation, right? So instead of using t1 minus t into c, you can call pseudo range. Pseudo range from satellite one, satellite two, three. If it is aeronautical, then satellite four. Four equations solved. Get the answers. This is exactly how the GPS finds out positions. Clear or any doubts? Yes. Yes. Navigation message clear. Yes, All the five subframes, yes, yes, starting with satellite clock error. Right? It doesn't talk of user clock because atomic clocks are not there with the user; they are only with the master control and with the satellites. satellites. Second and third subframe gives you the own satellites data and other things. Four special instructions, five almanac of all the other satellites. satellites. Clear or any doubts? Yes. Okay. Thank you.